Hi there, students. Um, this is a demo on how to scan using the Epson uh, Perfection V600. Um, so the first thing to do is to make sure that you launch the image capture app. So, um, so I'm here in Launchpad. Um, and let's try that one more time. So Launchpad under Other here and image capture here. When you click that, image capture should come open like this. Um, Epson Perfection V600 should pop up in the devices section. If it doesn't, there are two possible um, issues. One, um, your Epson Perfection scanner is not plugged into the back of the computer, so make sure you have that USB cord plugged into your computer. Um, Option number two is that your Epson uh, scanner is not powered on. There is a power switch on the right-hand side of the scanner. Make sure that's clicked on, and you should see a green light on the front of the scanner. Um, good. So hopefully you have this device showing up here. Um, and I have the device open right now, so you see a scan of the open top. Um, what I want to do next is I want to get my image. Um, that could be your photogram. That could be uh, an image that you're going to be uh, scanning uh, one of your finished products from the darkroom, something like that. Um, and so I'm going to put my example photo in. Uh, this is a darkroom print that I made. Um, my own work. Close. So I'm putting it face down, and I'm putting the image um, all the way to the top right corner. Um, there is a little arrow there if you look carefully. And so that's, that's what we just did there. So it, I clicked on overview and it shows me an overview of my scan. A couple of things we wanna do here. Um, leave it on flatbed, uh, change it from color to black and white. 256 grays is great. Um, put it from, or make sure it's at the uh, 600 DPI setting. Um, I am gonna use a custom size. Um, that means that when I click custom size, that means I'm going to drag, um, I'm going to click and drag on this. Oh, I'm failing. Highlight that thing again. Here we go. And I want to click and drag on these little dots to get the size that I want. Um, I am looking over here. I can type it in. So I could say I want to make sure that this is an 8 by 11. And I could type that in. Oh, not like that. Man, I'm having an issue with this here. 8 by 11 there. And now I could maneuver this 8 by 11 um, into the space I want it to fill. So 8 by 11 looks too big to me. So I, I'm actually going to adjust this. This is too far over. I want, I want to get to crop that top little edge off. I want to make sure that this gets cut here and that this branch is getting trimmed right to the edge there. That looks pretty good how I have it there. Um, so that looks like 7 and 0.38 by 11. That's, that looks fine to me. Um, good, okay, so I have my size correct. Um, next I want to, um, this auto selection, turn that off. And, um, okay, nice. That got rid of my, my uh, crop, so. I'll have to adjust that in a second. Um, so anyways, I'm going to scan it to my desktop. I'm going to name this um, my last name. And I'm going to call it Scan1. Rodriguez Scan1. And I want to make it into a TIFF because I know I'm going to bring that into Photoshop. Um, I'm not going to do any image correction here. Um, I am going to put the unsharpened mask to low. I'm going to de-screening for fine prints. So here, fine prints, and uh, brightness correction for medium. Um, I'm sorry, backlight correction to medium, and none of the dust removal. And that should do it. And now I do need to redraw this box because it's gone. So I'm going to redraw this box, something like this. Bring that there. And it's down here. I might just type this in, and maybe this one I'm going to go seven and a quarter, 
and make sure that the edges are how I want them. They are. And now I'm going to click on scan here. And since I told it I want to scan it to my desktop, it should scan any minute there. It's going. And I'm going to take this down. And so now I should see it pop up on my desktop here. It is taking its time here, so. Once we have the, the TIFF file, um, we can bring it into Photoshop for some final editing. Now, if you're not bringing your picture into Photoshop to do any editing, you could change this format to JPEG, and you could bring a JPEG directly from your scan right into um, your Spark page for your portfolio. Um, I always recommend doing some editing in Photoshop because the scanner does, it loses a little bit of its luster. Um, the scanner isn't perfect and we can bring some of that back. So if I compare this scan that I just made with the image that I actually have, um, the darks are a little darker, the lights are a little uh, flat, um, the midtones are a little flat. And so I want to bring that into Photoshop to make that adjustment. So I'm going to bring this in right into Photoshop here. Photoshop's going to, going to open. Um, one thing for sure is that we should rotate the image. And you can do that not in Photoshop as well. Um, but I'm going to rotate it here. So um, yeah, so Command-T for transform. Unlock this layer first. Command-T for transform. And you can do a rotation here um, however you want. I could also go. I can escape out of that. I can also say image and um, image rotation 90 degrees counterclockwise. That's another way to do it. So there we go. Here. Now, I do want this to be a smart object. So I am going to click on this and go filter smart objects. And once I get that smart convert for smart filter, <clears throat> that will give us this little box here. And then from there, I want to go filter camera raw. In camera raw, it gives me the ability to really focus in on the exposure of this. You can do that here in the basics panel. Um, I personally like to get into the curves panel here. Why? Because this gives me control of highlights, lights, dark shadows right away. Um, so I might just say my highlights actually look okay, but my lights are a little dull. My darks are a little too dark, so I'm going to bring the exposure up on the darks, and the shadow areas are a little, a little bit dark. I'm going to bring those up, and I'm just, I'm, I'm actually looking at the print image right in front of me, um, so that I can try to match it as close as I can. The darks are still a little dark compared to my printed image, so I'm just trying to match back to what it looked like in the print. That looks much better there. Um, in my detail slider, I might sharpen this just a little bit, um, bringing it up, maybe a, a sharpen to a 15, a 10, 12. And I'm just looking at, when I'm sharpening it, I'm looking at sharpening the edges a little bit without creating any uh, too much digital noise. So that, so if I, if I bring it up way over, mm, it's going to start to get some digital noise in there. So it looks pretty good, actually, how it is. I, I, I'm going to go back here and get it right around 20, like that. Might be too much, 20. Let's go down there. OK. <clears throat> That's looking pretty good there. Um, one thing I'd like to do is get into the basic panel towards the bottom. There are a couple of things here that I like to adjust is the clarity and the dehaze. The dehaze re removes a little bit of an atmospheric presence that's, that kind of gets in there from the scan. Um, it does sometimes darken some of the things, so I'll, I'll adjust some of the shadows again um, if it darkened it too much. Clarity brings in mid-tone contrast. Um, and again, I'm just looking at this. I don't want to overdo it, so I'm looking at this thing here. I'm looking at this here. Um, and maybe bring in a little bit of texture to give this, this branch uh, the texture that it has in the original print. Somewhere in there. That looks right. I do think we went a little dark in the in a couple areas here, so I am going to go back to my curve now and bring in the darks bring up a little bit more and the shadows bring up a little bit more somewhere in this range. That 
That looks better. Yeah, I like how that looks. That looks great. I'm going to hit OK here. Yeah, quite a bit better. Um, looks more like my original, which is what I was looking for. OK, perfect. So now I want to do a file save, save as, and I want to put it back onto my desktop on my computer here. And now would be the time where I switch it from a TIFF to a JPEG. Um, actually, nope, I'm wrong. File, export as. And here's where we're going to go and create this as a JPEG here. So JPEG, great quality here. And export here. Onto my desktop. Now, if you want to save a Photoshop file of this, you could. So I might save this scan as a Photoshop document. So I could do a file save as, and I could save this to my cloud documents here. Save to Creative Cloud. And I could have this as Rodriguez scan one, save, and I'll have that scan. That's in my Creative Cloud files. So if I close this out, you can see it here, right? And so I can click on that and see it. Yeah, good. From here, <clears throat> done with the scanner. At this point, I have this JPEG sitting on my desktop, and I can bring that in to my Adobe Spark page, right? So I can bring this into Adobe Spark and create my post that I need to do. Signing in with Google. And now here's my Rodriguez portfolio, and I can bring this photo in, right, like I've done before with a plus. The thing, when you bring it in here, we want to make sure that we title it, um, and I have my exposure triangle here, and then we want to write our paragraph here. Check in the Google Classroom for exactly what the paragraph about the assignment should have in it. There's a, there's a written document in the Google Classroom that tells you exactly what you need to put in here. Check that and you do this writing. All right, if you have any questions, send me an email or talk to me in class. Thank you and have a good rest of your night.